What's up YouTube? I'm the nice one and today we are going to be making a character model or at least our base reference model in about five minutes. So in the previous uh, tutorial videos you've seen me do, uh, I use the mirror modifier a lot and I realize in those time-lapse videos you can't really see exactly what I'm doing so I just wanted to give you more of a like step-by-step -step, uh, example and real-time example of how I use that um, mirror modifier. So I gave myself a bit of a challenge to create a character model in about five minutes. So uh, let's get started. Okay, cool. So here we are in Blender. So let's get started. We will delete all of our stuff here. So we'll hit Shift A. Uh, we'll hit A actually. And to select everything, click X and to delete. Okay, great. Now let's get started. So we'll do Shift A to create a mesh. We'll make a cube. Right, and then we'll click tab to enter the uh, editing mode and we'll hit two to go into uh, edge mode. And what we want to do is add a edge loop using control R straight down the center. I'll use my left click to click where it will be and then I'll right click to get it right dead in the center. Now I'm going to hit one to go uh, dead in the center. Oh, I actually created the edge loop on the wrong side. So that was my mistake. Um, instead, what I'll do is create another edge loop right here because that's okay. Again, we'll control R, left click to move it around, right click to get a dead center. We'll hit one to get um, to get a perfect front view. And then we'll hit shift Z to go into uh, transparent view. Next, we'll go uh, hit one to go into vertex mode. And we're going to select these two vertices here. And we're going to hit X to delete them because we only want one half. Now hitting tab, we'll go back into the object mode. And we'll go over here into modifiers. And we're going to add a mirror modifier uh, right here. So now that you see in the mirror modifier, uh, the half of the object that was there before uh, is now being perfectly mirrored on the opposite side. And if I edit one side, it'll be, um, it'll be perfectly symmetrical on both ends. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So I got about three minutes left. <laughs> I'm really trying hard to stick to this five minute challenge, but I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Um, but yeah, okay, now we got a perfect uh, mirror. I will turn on clipping because if you don't turn on clipping, if you leave this off, you'll notice here that any edges down the center that connect will be able to be split, right? And sometimes we don't want that. So if you turn on clipping, uh, that means any edges down the center that are connected become a single piece and really only move on the Z axis. So that helps a lot. Okay, let's make a simple character model. First, we're gonna start, we're gonna use this one to make the head. So I'll add an edge loop here, right? Uh, and make a cup, we have a couple edge loops now. I'll add an additional modifier of a subdivision surface because I, I want this to round out and maybe I'll up the levels to be a bit smoother. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into vertex uh, editing mode and we're just gonna move this, these vertexes around using G to get sort of a nice rounded shape here for this uh, character model's head. If you know my style from previous videos, I do more of a chibi look to my characters. So I'm going for sort of a bigger head, um, bigger head and like a smaller body effect. And so thankfully I only need to do this on one side because a mirror modifier just perfectly mirrors it on the opposite end. So I really only need to care about one side while I'm doing this. Again, this is all very rough. You might, if you want, you could probably add a few more edge loops to define, to define it a bit better. But basically I'm just roughing out where this character's cheeks will be. Uh, you know, I kind of want them to be kind of cute, right? Kind of like pudgy in some ways. Um, and where this character's forehead will be, maybe where their hair and everything. So. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, maybe I'll add an edge loop right here down the center and then click um, one to get into vertex mode and just bring this down to sort of imply where a nose point could be. Because um, you know how in like anime, for example, the nose is sort of just a point. It's not actually like, they don't actually have nostrils or anything sometimes. So I'm just gonna follow that style. And uh, there you go. Now we have sort of a basic head. Uh, and I got about one minute left, which is kind of tough, but that's okay. Uh, next up, we're going to do the body, right? So we're going to go back to object mode, hit A, shift A, make another cube, drop this cube down using GZ, uh, add an edge loop here, go into uh, transparent mode, delete the vertices, all right, delete the vertices, and add another mirror modifier to this object hitting clipping, remember that your axis is going to depend, changing what axis you flip on 
uh, is going to be where your mirror appears. So if you change that, you'll see. You may experiment around with it, but I generally just keep it to the default. Now going back into edge mode, we're going to add a few more edge loops so that we can mess around with this um, object a bit. And we're going to add another subdivision surface to smooth it out, right? Uh, we'll up the levels to maybe two. And we're going to go back into editing, uh, vertex edit mode to make a body. So I'm going to sort of just tweak this character's body a little bit. Uh, maybe he wants to be a bit smaller, uh, maybe be a bit narrower like that. Bump this up here a tiny bit. Maybe select both these edges and bring this in along the x-axis like this. Kind of round it out a little bit. Uh, and then maybe I can do a, a quick extrusion around the top of this body to imply where a neck will be. It's okay that it's not part of the same mesh right now because we're going to use a Boolean modifier later to connect it all into one piece. So uh, that's okay. Here what I'm doing is selecting the actual edge itself as opposed to the individual vertices to round it out, uh, round it down. And now I'm going back into vertex mode and just sort of, I'm gonna add a few more edge loops to give myself a few more points to modify and really get that perfect uh, shape of a body that I want. Um, and uh, yeah, da, 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 da. Uh, I think that looks pretty, looks pretty good. To be honest with you, that is pretty chibi-esque overall. Yeah, I'm decently happy with that. Uh, da, da, da. Maybe move these in because that's where the legs are gonna pop out of. Maybe move this forward. Maybe you give this guy a bit of a belly. Kind of cute. Um, and uh, yeah, there we go. And we have a decent box model body. Yeah, that's that's okay. Again, we're not doing this. We're doing this super quick. I'm trying to keep it simple for y'all. Okay, great. Uh, I think I am over time, unfortunately, but that's okay. You know, uh, it's better that you just learn how to create a base reference model for yourself than it is for me to complete this in under five minutes because you might end up watching, rewatching some portions or whatever works best for you. Okay, so now let's make the body or let's make the legs. Uh, I'm going to hit Control R and I'm going to add an edge loop right here near the groin area because what I want to do is select these faces here and extrude down to make the legs, but I don't want them connected here at the moment. So I'm going to do that. Maybe I'm going to round these out into more of a circular shape uh, so that when the legs come down, they're more of like cylinders than like flat planes. Uh, maybe bring this down a touch. Yeah, like just like that. And I, it's not bad. I think it's pretty good. And uh, yeah, okay, cool. So let's go into three into face selection mode. And we'll hit E to extrude down. And there you go. Now you have a face, or now you have legs. And we're going to scale on the Y axis to bring this down a bit. Maybe scale again on the X. Uh, bring this up a tiny bit. Yeah, uh, that's not bad. Yeah, okay. I think this body needs to be shrunk down a tiny bit more to imply it's like a chibi kind of style. And then we're just going to extrude again. Um, the reason I extrude it again is because I want this to be the lower leg and I want this to be the upper leg. When I make my character models, I basically ensure that they have sort of three, or how many points? I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen 10, 11, 12, segments to it. So those 15 segments represent the torso, the abdomen, the upper leg, the lower leg, both feet, upper arm, lower arm, and both hands. Um, and so those are the basic... 15 segments that are rough out as references when I'm creating a reference model. And uh, yeah, okay, cool. So going through, and uh, maybe let's scale up this stuff right here, make his feet a little bit better. And we don't need to make this perfect, but I do want to make it decent or good enough for y'all. Uh, create, select the three face, and then we're just going to make the foot here and just extrude it out like that. Uh, maybe uh, rotate like this. And there you go. Now you got some cute little feet, feeties for this little guy. Uh, his butt's sticking out here a little bit weird, so maybe I mean, maybe we'll give him a bit of a butt. It'd be kind of cute. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, cool. Um, uh, da -da -da. What else? All right, great. Now we have feet, legs, and a head. Now we just need to add the arms. So we'll just select. Honestly, let's just select. Maybe we'll select these. This mesh. Yeah, that's not bad. 
Um, yeah, we'll extrude from that side of the mesh to imply where the upper arms will be. We'll scale down that face so that it is proportionally a bit more, makes more proportional sense to a body. And we're going to move these vertexes around a little bit to imply where the shoulder will be. Um, maybe scale this in a bit more um, to give them more of a less of a blobby sort of blobby shape. Kind of looks like a it's kind of giving baby a little bit, but I guess that's I guess that's like the I guess that's a chippy style um, in some cases. So if y'all aren't doing a chippy style kind of character, that's okay. You don't have to follow these proportions exactly. It's just it fits more of what my animation stuff has just evolved into. I'll extrude one more time here to do the upper arms, the upper arm, right? And then I'll go into mirror, into transparency mode to uh, move around those vertices to imply where the joint bow, this is where the elbow will be. So I'm keeping my mesh pretty simple so that I know where all the major joints are. And then I guess I'll do one more extrusion on here. So this is the wrist, this little segment right here is the wrist. And then we'll do one more to imply where the hands will be. So we'll do this, and maybe along here we'll scale this up on the X, on the Y axis. Scale on the Y to make it a little bit larger, and uh, that'll be this character's hand. Um, yeah, I think that's looking decent. Maybe we'll select these faces here and narrow it down to imply like a wrist, just like that. Maybe we'll add an edge loop here and then select these faces here to imply like a forearm a little bit. Uh, rotate that. And uh, yeah, okay, cool. I think that's looking decent. This arm is a little bit big, I'll be honest with you. So maybe I need to move that in a little bit to be a bit proportional to this character's body. We're just doing like a basic T pose, honestly. And uh, da -da -da -da. And there you go. Okay, cool. I think that's not bad. Um, let's add a neck, and I think we can call it a day after that. We'll extrude up from here. We'll scale it down, and then maybe move it up like this. Maybe we'll add a little edge loop right here using Control R. Uh, using Control R, and then moving my mouse down. Maybe scaling it in, I'm making sure it overlaps with the over the head over here. There you go. Scale this body in a little bit. And uh, yeah, there you go. I think that's uh, pretty good overall. Uh, ch -ch 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 maybe push these legs down. Because it was looking a little too much like a baby for me. And uh, I wasn't really super comfortable with that, to be honest with you. <laughs> so cool. Da -da -da -da. Move these around. And uh, yeah, overall, not bad. I think that's uh, pretty good for a, I guess this is a 10 minute character model. I apologize. I really thought I could do this in five, but I got a little carried away with giving it, giving some of the details and stuff like that. Um, but there you go. You're basically done. You have your reference model here um, that you can now put armor on top of. You can spend a little bit of time to really like polish off and like imply where the chest muscles are or the abdomen, or you can really like tweak the, um, tweak the waist if you want it narrower or bigger or if you want like the biceps or the arms or the hands to be larger you can tweak all of that using vertex mode and just scaling stuff i would highly suggest you do all that before applying the subdivision because once it's applied it basically turns it into a bunch of faces and then modifying those faces gets a little bit more cumbersome versus when it's just in preview mode and you can edit like fewer faces and fewer vertices and get the same effect um, but yeah, that's an example of how I used a mirror modifier to create a character model. Again, you just want to be, be mindful of where your axis is mirroring, and you want to turn on clipping to make sure that no vertices along the center line, the line of symmetry, is um, splitting, so that you don't have like overlapping stuff or just like a non-manifold mesh. And uh, yeah, I think we'll call it a day here. Uh, let me move this down, and yeah, all good to go. You know what, maybe we can try and make... Maybe we could try and make some fingers if you want. Uh, we'll do this, add edge loop here, extrude out to make a thumb, and then we will add an edge loop. How should we do this? Hmm. We'll add a couple edge loops around this center line here. We'll do one, we'll do, we'll do three, we'll do three fingers, ah, we'll do four. 
just like that. There you go. Now and now we'll select each of these faces and we'll extrude out uh, just like that. Uh, we'll move this here. It's like this face, extrude out. Like this face, extrude out. It's like this face right here and extrude out. And then we'll scale all this stuff uh, a little bit. And you can add joints by like extruding a second time to like imply where all the finger joints are. I don't, I don't know if that's really necessary for this particular tutorial. Um, but uh, if you want to go and give it that detail, by all means, I highly suggest you do. We're gonna scale down these, maybe turn it down like this and rotate it a touch. And uh, there you go. <laughs> they are looking kind of crazy. I won't lie, these hands are looking a little bit weird when I was just trying to do it as quickly as possible as I could for you uh, to keep this video shorter than some of my other ones. But you can see how you rough out. My technique is basically rough out the general shape, you know, get it basically there, 80% there, and then go back in and try and like tweak to perfection or like tweak to make it exactly what you imagine, right? So don't spend too much time I would suggest not spending too, too much time getting caught up in the weeds of it all um, while you're doing this type of work to say, get in a good spot, get the rough uh, outline or the rough shapes in, and then go from there, you know? Uh, add the detail after. Yeah, cool, I think that's not bad. Uh, just a basic box model character model using the mirror modifier and the subdivision surface modifier. Um, hopefully that was useful. I definitely did not do this in five minutes, so I will not put that in the title. Um, I guess I was a bit of hubris thinking I could, but I think I worked out pretty quickly over in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and uh, I think it's good practice when you're trying to make your own characters, you know, making base reference models for future stuff and making sure proportions are matched like your style of your other characters. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. Hope you find this useful. Uh, leave any questions down below if you have any, and uh, I'll catch you later, okay? Thanks for watching the video. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below what you want to see next, or just check out some of these other great videos. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.